Hello there, what is Garden Research? Well, of course, we'll be focusing on research, but basically the two main benefits, which is that we will be able to combat regulation changes and that we improve our car for next year. So first of all, let's try and understand how the regulation changes work. They will be happening every year around the same time, which is April. In this case, we got the regulation vote on April 10th. It gets goes through another week later, and then we get research period open. Again, regulation will happen around the same time every year, and depending on what they are, they could have some pretty huge effects for your car. Now, the relocation changes we got this year is a 30% hit to our car part expertise, redu car part expertise reduction. Basically, we lose 30% of our expertise in low speed, 20% medium, and 10% in high speed. So, as I said, regulation changes will usually happen fairly early in the season, first couple of weeks of April, giving you plenty of time to figure out how you want to deal with them. Regulation changes are going to take certain amounts of your expertise. As I said here, relate us an expect percentage, for this case, 30% low, 20% medium, 10% high. And you might ask yourself what expertise is. Expertise is basically a number that represents how skilled your engineers are in understanding that particular aspect of a part. So expertise will have a different stat for all of these modifiers. In this case, you have the underfloor. It has five expertise stats and they're all independent of each other and they're all in every single part. So you have five different expertise stats here on the underfloor. You'll have uh, six different ones here on the side pods. And they gen sorry the suspension and they generally will not interact with each other. Your expertise is again how well does your engineer understand your underfloor drag reduction? That is your expertise number here. And expertise in this year's edition is kind of hard to figure out because it's bundled in together with your buildings and it's bundled in together with your staff. So it's generally incredibly difficult to figure out exactly what it is. So we won't be worrying too much about that in particular. But just as a standard expertise is a hidden stat, and it decides a lot about how, well, it's not really hidden. It's the stat that decides how good your part is going to be. Now, how do we actually figure out, in this case, 30% loss? It doesn't say how much we're going to lose in terms of expertise. You can actually check that number if you go to your board, funnily enough. If you go to your board, rules and regulation, and then you click, say, the underfloor, it'll tell you exactly how much you're going to lose in every part but you might be having a little bit of trouble here what does six kilonewtons mean what does 24 kilonewtons mean what does 79 mean so let's jump back quickly to our car and i'll explain what this means because these are the only stats that aren't really represented in percentages so for your low speed downforce it'll go from three to a maximum of five kilonewtons meaning that it's a range of two which means that every point there from zero points well basically 0 0.01 kilonewtons equals 0 0.05 percent might sound a little bit difficult, but once you get it, it really isn't. So in this case, we can actually just subtract 3 from this number, and we get 1.49. And 1.49 is 74.5% of 2. And same here, medium goes from 5 to 7. Again, it's the same with 2, basically 2, uh, two window, 2.0 window, if that makes sense. And it will give us a 75.5% expertise. And high speed is even simpler. It just goes from seven to eight, meaning that we can just ignore that first number. That would give us about 81% expertise. So that is how you can see your general expertise. But remember, this is bundled in with your staff and your buildings. So it's not your real expertise. And honestly, we can probably figure out what our real expertise is right now by going to our boardroom and having a bit of a look again. So let's head to the boardroom quickly and we'll see what it has to say about our expertise for the underfloor. So it says we're going to be losing about 0.6. Uh, so no, sorry, 0 0.39 here, which means that in reality, we're losing about 20% of our uh, of our underfloor expertise, because again, it goes from it's a two, it's goes from zero to two, and we're losing 0 0.4. So in reality, that 30% means that we're losing a total of about 20%, because again, it takes 30% of your current expertise, and the translation in this case would be close to 20%. And same here, this would be about a 12% loss. This would be a 6% loss. So it kind of follows what you'd expect. But at the same time, your research is a way to combat this. And that is mainly what you should focus on. You should focus on getting these green numbers here to be either the same or higher than the numbers on the right. But currently that is a little bit difficult. And the reason that is that there is a bug currently with research. I'll probably remake this guide once that bug is fixed, make it a little bit more easier to understand. Uh, but basically for research, there is currently a bug where you can't really, even if you move the sliders, 
it doesn't have an effect. So even if we were to say go low speed here, we wanted to focus on that and catch up, uh, it won't have an effect. We will not be giving, getting 0 0.07 kilonewtons if we did this research uh, because of how that bug works. So we can actually test this out. We're going to do this research before the end of the year, uh, like so, and we'll have a look at if it actually had any effect. So that should, as I said, give us 0 0.07. Our current one is, uh, let's just have a quick look again. Uh, 0.36, we should be, we should see 0.43 here at the end of the year. Now, again, the, the board here, you can actually check where you're at, but it usually takes about a month to update. So you kind of need a month to take over for your research to show up here. And it's still going to count. Don't worry if you don't get it done, but it's going to take a day. It's going to take about a month to just take over and show you. Now, the second thing you probably want to be focused on is when do you start research? And again, that's going to depend a lot on your regulations. If you're going to hit with pretty low regulations, it's not a problem to start late. If they're going to be harsh, you might want to start a little bit earlier. If you don't have any chance of improving on your current season standings, basically, let's say that you're stuck in fifth, you don't have any chance of getting for fourth, basically, you don't really are going to lose fifth place or sixth place. You can just go ahead and research then and there. But generally, a good rule of thumb for me is that once I start hitting about 40 million on this number on the cost cap, uh, 40, 30 million, it's the time to stop designing and definitely start just focusing on research because that is uh, basically when you are going to start running out of money and you're going to start feeling the cost cap. So that is also a good rule of thumb on when you should start. But uh, there's also one more aspect that we need to go through here really quick, and that is CFD and wind tunnel hours. You can actually use those on your research. And as you can see, they do boost that stat quite significantly. But again, this is based on... This is based on your current expertise. The lower it is, the quicker it will go up. And as you can see, if that gave us a ton more stats uh, over here for next season. And the way that this actually works, the CFD and winter allows, is that for each unit you invest, basically each click like this is a unit. So in this case, we have 66 units here, 88 units here, total of 154. So for each unit we invest, we gain an extra day of expertise gain. So basically, this project which is going to be running for, in this case, 40 days, would have the expertise gain as if we ran it continuously for 196 days. Yes, sorry, 194 days. So that is basically a ton of expertise stacked into a very, very short window. But again, we won't have any effect on it until next year. But it's a very, very effective way of boosting stats that particularly are falling behind or getting caught up with catch up with other things. But again, uh, keep in mind though, as I said, that the sliders don't work. So even if we do this, for instance, in this case, we're gonna just put everything into the low speed cornering. And this again would be a 30% increase next year in the expertise field if it worked as uh, expected. This would just be a 5%, this would be a 4%, which kind of lines up with the rest here. So we're gonna do this as a kind of a test to see if it actually, you know, just to show you that again, the sliders don't work properly. But using your safety and wind tunnel hours on a research project can be a massive gain if they are falling a little bit behind and can really help you catch up with the other teams the next season. So don't sleep on it. It's actually really good. If you are going to use safety and wind tunnel hours on your uh, components, make sure that you make another one after the one that you've used your wind tunnel and safety time on for design, because that one is going to be way better than the one you actually use time on. So you kind of get a double whammy there. Uh, but with that in mind, as I said, we're going to do this just to test it. As you can see, it's blocked because we're running out of days. But as you can also see here, as we decrease the amount of days, the stats go down. And that is actually because the expertise gain is based on a daily gain. The longer the project runs, the more expertise you'll get in total. But the shorter the project runs, the more expertise you'll gain per day, but you'll gain less total. So running them longer is more efficient in terms of money. Running them shorter is more efficient in terms of gains. But again, it's going to cost you more. So... Honestly, just run them as long as possible and you'll be fine. But we are going to have to make sure that we basically extend them as much as possible in December because we need to get them done in the end of December. 31st December is actually perfect. Now, for safety and wind tunnel hours also, you might want to upgrade your buildings, but in reality, you don't. The wind tunnel and CFD sim might seem like something that is really good to upgrade, but don't upgrade these. Don't touch them. There's no point. For research in particular, uh, the CFD and wind tunnel uh, buildings will revert to level one. No matter if these are max level or not, they will have the effect of the level one buildings 
when you put them into your research. I don't know if it's intended to be this way, but it's how it worked right now. And considering that we're probably going to be using, well, considering also that the safety and winter uh, buildings, the maintenance goes up by a lot and these go under cost cap. So in this case, this would be an increase in about uh, 65,000, which means that we'd be using another 800,000 of a cost cap, just upgrading this to level two. And again, we're just going to be able to use these for six times a year. So they're not even hugely beneficial. They don't give any they don't give any passive stats here. These are just when you use your CFD and wind tunnel time. So there's no need to upgrade these past level one. Don't upgrade these. The other ones here that actually give passive stats are much better investments. And particularly your car park science stats. Again, I'm getting a little bit off topic here. Apparently, your car, basically these two have virtually no increase in their monthly upkeep. And they do give you stat boost. So your car park test center in particular, your potential sim, your design center, you can upgrade these, but don't touch your wind tunnel and safety sim. It's just not worth it. And that is basically the research. It's actually pretty simple. The goal is to, again, uh, counter the regulation changes. You can also use it to improve your car just as a general notice, a general wave until next year. And again, it's going to be dependent on your situation when you want to start research. But generally, as you reach 40, 30 million left in your cost cap, you definitely want to try and switch over. Focus a bit more on research if you are able to, unless you're having a really epic find in the championship, for instance. And again, wind tunnel and safety time, each unit is basically an extra day uh, added to your project it doesn't add an extra day it add, it adds an extra day's worth of expertise to your project sorry i wasn't completely clear so they're really powerful but again they're limited to just six uh, periods a year the first period has to be used on design but you can use the other five periods on research if you want to now we are going to be skipping ahead here and as i said we're going to be seeing if the uh, as i'm actually just going to be showcasing just how that bug works again low speed here we would expect to get up to 0.43 for the side for the suspension here would expect to get up to 0.65 so we'll jump to the end here and see if it actually did that so here we are at the end of the season where we can actually have a look at how our things did remember the underflow should be 0.43 it's not as you can see the sliders have reverted to more of a balance setting we get a little bit more well we get a little bit of across everything suspensions will be seeing the same thing it didn't hit 0.65 it basically reverted to a more balanced setting so unfortunately, the sliders don't work, which means doing that, combating the regular changes are going to be really hard. And that's going to be the same for all the themes and particularly the AI teams are going to be really hit hard by this. So if you can focus your research to a point where you don't actually lose any expertise, but gain a little bit for next year, for instance, you're going to have a pretty huge advantage against them. Now, this guy is slightly haphazard. Uh, I could probably have spent a little bit more time on it. But as I said, as this bug is currently in the game, uh, there's no need to, I feel like there's no need to put too much, you know, focus onto it because I'll be make, remaking this guide once we get the rebalance because there is going to be a rebalance. They are going to fix this, I would assume. So I would assume that we're going to have a rebalance to research then as well, because the AI is falling very sharply behind right now. And as a result, uh, this is basically how I would do research on the current patch of the game. It does work pretty well. Uh, again, most of this testing I've done by myself. But uh, a lot of the blanks have been filled in by the work by Mike Takumi, who is really, really good at making, uh, at testing this out. He's basically a wizard, the Adrian Newey of F1 Manager. So check out his guide. I'll be linking that in the description. It'll be going a little bit in, more in depth into the things that I've been talking about. But this is just a general guide to, again, how research works. He also has a pretty in-depth uh, design guide, which I will be adding to basically my revised design guide. With, uh, which will be up in hopefully a day or so, maybe a couple of days. And uh, yeah, that is basically it for research. If I have missed anything, I'll do as, as I usually do. I'll put it in the pinned comment below the video. And uh, yeah, hopefully, if there are any questions, feel free to ask them. And as I said, if if there is anything I've forgotten, I'll be putting it in the pinned comment. But this is basically how research works, how I would do it. And in my opinion, what you need to know about how to take advantage of it, to have a Basically a winning team in season two, season three, depending of course on how you want to how hard you want to main max. But again, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Hope to see you around next time. And again, let me know what you think. Please like and subscribe, it helps me out a ton. And yeah, see you next time. Go check out the guide from Mike. It's amazing and it's probably gonna make the game maybe a little bit too easy for you. So read with care.